Hare Krishna. So, dear devotees, um, the class is from Canto 2, Chapter 3, Text 10. Um, Anastasia has some uh, altar service now, so she'll be coming later. Hare Krishna. It's all yours, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Akamo Sarvakamo Vamokshakamo Dadadi Tirena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purusham Param. What is going on? Oh. A person who has broader intelligence, whether it be full of all material desire, without any material desire, or desiring liberation, must by all means worship the Supreme Whole Personality of Godhead. Purport. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is described in the Bhagavad Gita as Purushottam, or the Supreme Personality. It is he only who can award liberation to the impersonalists by absorbing such aspirants in the Brahma Jyoti, the bodily rays of the Lord. The Brahma Jyoti is not separate from the Lord, as the glowing sun ray is not independent of the sun disk. Therefore, one who desires to merge into the supreme impersonal Brahma Jyoti must also worship the Lord by Bhakti Yoga, as recommended here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhakti Yoga is especially stressed here as the means of all perfection. In the previous chapters, it has been stated that Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal of both Karma Yoga and Jnana Yoga. In the same way, in this chapter, it is em emphatically declared that Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate goal of the derision or the varieties of worship and the different de demigods. Bhakti Yoga, thus being the supreme means of self-realization, is recommended here. Everyone must therefore seriously take up the methods of bhakti yoga, even though one aspires for material enjoyment or liberation from material bondage. Kama is one who has no material desire. A living being naturally, being part and parcel of the Supreme Purushottam Param, has a natural function to serve the Supreme Being, just as the parts and parcels of the body or the limbs of the body are naturally meant to serve the complete body. Desireless means, therefore, not to be inert like the stone, but to be conscious of one's actual position, and thus desire satisfaction only from the Supreme Lord. Srila Jiva Goswami has explained this desirelessness as bhajaniya paramam purush sukamatra svasukatom in his sandarva. This means that one should feel happy only by experiencing the happiness of the Supreme Lord. This intuition of the living being is sometimes manifested even during the conditioned state of the living being in the material world. And as such, intuition is expressed in the manner of altruism, philanthropy, socialism, communism, etc. by the undeveloped minds of the less intelligent persons. In the mundane field, such an outlook of doing good to others in the form of society, community, family, country, or humanity is a partial manifestation of the same original feeling which a pure living entity feels happiness by the happiness of the Supreme Lord. Such superior, superb feelings were exhibited by the damsels of Raj for the happiness of the Lord. The gopis loved the Lord without any return, and this is the perfect exhibition of the Akama spirit. Kama spirit, or the desire for one's own satisfaction, is exhibited fully in the material world, whereas the spirit of Akama is fully exhibited in the spiritual world. Thoughts of becoming one with the Lord, of being merged into the Brahma Jyoti, can also be exhibition of the Kama spirit if, 
They are desires for one's own satisfaction to be free from material miseries. A pure devotee does not want liberation so that he may be relieved from the miseries of life. Even without so-called liberation, a pure devotee is an aspirant for the satisfaction of the Lord. Influenced by the Kama spirit, Arjuna declined to fight in the Kurukshetra battle because he wanted to save his relatives for his own satisfaction. But being a pure devotee, he agreed to fight on the instructions of the Lord because he came to his senses and realized that satisfaction at the loss at the cost of his own satisfaction was his prime duty. Thus he became Akama, that is, perfect stage of a living being. Udharadi means one who has broader outlook. People with desires for material enjoyment worship small demigods, and such intelligence is condemned in the Bhagavad Gita as Ritta Jnana, the intelligence of one who has lost his senses. One cannot obtain any results from demigods without getting the sanction of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, a person with a broader outlook can see that the ultimate authority is the Lord, even for material benefit. Under the circumstances, one who, with a broader outlook, even with the desire for material enjoyment or liberation, should take to the worship of the Lord directly. And everyone, whether a kama, sakama, moksha kama, should worship the Lord with great expedience. This implies that bhakti yoga may be perfectly administrated without any mixture of karma and jnana. As the unmixed sun rays is very forceful and is therefore called tibra, similarly, unmixed bhakti yoga of hearing, chanting, etc., may be performed by one and all, regardless of their motive. Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Maum Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Putale, Himakti Bhakti Vedanta, Sri Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacharine Nevisay Sasunyavari Pasyati and Satarine, Panchakalpa, Rubischa, Vipa Sindhu Bevacha, Pitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so this verse comes into in the sequence of verses where in the previous verses, which are grouped together as one, verses two through seven, and then verses eight and nine, talk about if one has material desires, they can worship the Lord in different ways to fulfill those material desires. This doesn't give sanction to the idea of material desires. Why would Bhagavatam give sanction to material desires? It's not. It's just mentioning that for those who are fixed on getting material desires, they can approach the Lord also. But this verse seems to nullify all of the um, motivations that people may have for worshiping something other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it, the verse, the indication here is a person with broader intelligence. In other words, one can fulfill all their desires perfectly and completely, whether they have many material desires, no material desires, or are self-satisfied by dint of transcendental knowledge. So these three classes are really <clears throat> categorized as those in all aspects of life, jnanis, the karmis, the yogis, and ultimately the bhaktis. And that means 
that if one simply takes the devotional service, the results of all of these other activities automatically come by way of the process of devotional service, either directly or indirectly as one satisfies the Supreme Lord, one then the Lord fulfills that desire in a way that he gives them something better himself. So in all of the other processes become or not complete unless they end with bhakti yoga. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, bahunam janmanamante jnanamam prapadyante vasudeva sarvam iti sa mahatma sudur labhaha. One who cultivates knowledge for many, many births comes to the end of that cultivation and realizes that ultimately Vasudev, Krishna, is everything. And then they surrender to the Lord. And then the, then the perfection of their jnan becomes manifested in the form of bhakti, because in bhakti, jnana is included. In bhakti, karma is included. In bhakti, yoga is included. In bhakti, everything is there. Just like if you have a million dollars, you have a thousand dollars, you have a hundred dollars, you have ten dollars. So in the same way in bhakti, one can fulfill all of one's desires perfectly, completely, and even eternally as one takes up the process of devotion to the Supreme Lord. Because the, all of these other processes are meant for gradual elevation to come eventually to the process of worshiping the Lord in devotion. And this verse is very fundamental. This verse is similarly stated in another place in the Srimad Bhagavatam again, in slightly different Sanskrit, but the same idea is there. It's also mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita that no matter what your situation in life is, if you are a little bit aware of how to fulfill your desires, then do not directly take to the process that of fulfilling those desires because those desires cannot be fulfilled by any other process. These processes must include an element of bhakti. And when that element becomes the prominent feature of the practice of devotion, in other words, when one serves the Lord directly, then there's nothing else to achieve. Gyan and karma, yoga, everything becomes manifested through the process of bhakti because bhakti is the complete process of uh, the relationship with the absolute truth. Well, so this verse is attracting, trying to explain to those who still haven't come to this process of bhakti directly, that there's no need to try to uh, go to a lesser process for satisfaction, for happiness, for success in life. Everything can be, can be fulfilled simply by the process of devotional service. And so the verse is making a complete and clear understanding that those who are actually intelligent, but we see people in the material world, they're not intelligent. Therefore, they need to get intelligence and they can get intelligence if they come to the right source. The right source is that intelligence which is perfect or that intelligence that has been established as the foundation for intelligence. In other words, it is time tested. <laughs> and that is the intelligence that comes through the channels that are connected with the Supreme Lord, such as Guru and Shastra and Sadhu also. These are the means by which one can access one's proper intelligence and ultimately move forward to fulfill all of their desires in life and become completely satisfied and go beyond that where they actually can achieve the perfection of life, which is prema pumartha mahan, which is love of God, like that. So this knowledge 
is as good as bhakti itself in the sense that it brings one to bhakti. <laughs> and when you actually do a in-depth study, you'll find that in every process of relationships on all levels, even in gross material relationships, there's an, always an element of bhakti in that because bhakti is the feature by which everything moves. Bhakti is that energy which connects things to it to other things and, and brings things to a higher level. But bhakti is always there. You know, just like you might say, you know, but people sometimes love their dog or they love their cat or some kind of animal. You can't call that bhakti but they have a little element of that attraction for that that animal, which is somewhat indicated of the quality of attracting between two living entities, which is also the foundation by which bhakti exists. So in its minute form, bhakti is there in all aspects of existence. So one who is actually, as it says here, broader intelligence, that intelligence that sees things completely and not simply lim in a limited fashion, will understand because as we went through the previous verses, Krishna or the, the, the Bhagavatam, Sukadeva Goswami is mentioning, hey, you want a good wife, you know, worship uh, Lord Shiva. If you, if you want... Uh, if you want a, uh, what's it? You want to be powerful, worship the, uh, if you want good family, worship the Pajapatis. So many things are mentioned in those previous verses. Just to show that people want all of these different things, but they can get all of that plus the highest, and that is the relationship with the Supreme Lord in devotion, which is the foundation by which all other things have value. People, when people connect even their material desires to the process of bhakti, they get a little happiness from those material desires when they worship the Lord even for material desires. Because the Lord is actually the foundation of everything that exists. His energies are there throughout all of existence and his energies work to, to connect one to himself in different ways, either directly or indirectly. So ultimately, this is about the process of how worship expands itself into all aspects of itself because the source of it behind it is the supreme absolute truth. Of course, as devotees, we don't we don't uh, worship or seek out material desires or happiness and worship the Lord for that. But there are people who do that. They come to the churches, they come to the temples, they come to the mosques, they come to the religious sites, and their desire is to fulfill something material. They pray to the Lord like that. It's not only common, it's most it's more common than anything else. Therefore, it's not just common, it's all pervading. People worship the Lord to fulfill their material desires. Even within the society of devotees, that goes on. People come to Krishna conscious, but how many people actually want Krishna? Or they want something that Krishna can give them to fulfill the need in this material world. It may be very lofty, such as maybe a, uh, a good family life. So they'll worship Krishna for that. Or good, have good children. Sometimes people can't have children for some reason. And then they pray to God, and by the mercy of God, something happens, and they all of a sudden a child is born. So, yeah, 
Uh, so people generally go to God for something material. But if we worship God directly, then all of these material things become less than attractive. And even within that process of bhakti, Krishna fulfills everyone's desire perfectly, completely in, uh, at all times. Fulfilling a desire means two things. He gives you something better or he, he gives you that desire itself, either one. But he, basically, he gives you something better, that is himself. And when you have Krishna, you have everything. There's one particular verse that I can't remember. What is it? One who has Krishna ultimately has everything. Uh, I can't remember the verse now. It's really nice verse, too. It's really more like an aphorism or part of a verse that describes that the perfection of everything is, as Srila Prabhupada used to say, in the material world, everyone is looking for happiness. Ultimately, everyone is looking for Krishna. They may not be conscious of it, but they actually are because Krishna is the principle of happiness. And when they find Krishna, they find that happiness. <laughs> okay, so this is a nice verse. Go down the page so we can see the purport again and see what other points are there within the purport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down farther. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It says here, what was the, where was it? So the examples are Arjuna and the gopis. Both of them had their own, well, not, not the gopis, but Arjuna had his own desire not to fight, thinking it was actually beneficial for everyone. But Krishna told him actually, Actually, if you fight, you'll also gain. You can't lose by fighting. Even if you were dis destroyed, you will reach the, the higher realms. And if you have victory, uh, you can have sovereignty over the world. In either case, you'll be successful. The gopis are even higher. They, they don't ask anything for Krishna because they're attracted to Krishna so much that what all they want to do is please Krishna. So even if it's an inconvenient for them, they will do whatever it's required. There's that wonderful story when Krishna had a headache. And Narada Muni was with Krishna and they were talking. And Narada asked him how Krishna how he was. And Krishna said, Well, actually I have a headache. Well, Narada was a little concerned. So he said, What can we do? Well, Krishna said, there's only one solution. You have to get the dust of the lotus feet of my devotees on my head. And if you do that, then my uh, headache will be gone. So he went to various sages. He went to the sages of Dandakaranya Faris. He went to various types of groups of great personalities. Nobody wanted to give their dust. More were saying that if we put our foot dust on the head of the Supreme Lord, will go to hell. And therefore, Narada was frustrated. He was unable to find anyone. He came back and then he explained. And Krishna said, all right, now go to the Vrindavan and ask the gopis. When he did, the gopis immediately welcomed and immediately they asked, how was Krishna? When he explained that Krishna has a headache, mm -hmm. they were very concerned that he do something. And then they asked, and he said, well, Krishna said, if I get the dust of your feet on my head, then my headache will be gone. So the gopis didn't even hesitate. They started to immediately scrape the dust from their feet and make piles to give it to, uh, to uh, Narada. Narada was amazed when he came back to Krishna. And Krishna actually wanted to show Narada what is real devotion. When one puts aside everything for the pleasure of the Lord. Because ultimately, the pleasure of the Lord is the success 
of the devotees because when the Lord is pleased, everyone is pleased, especially that person who pleases the Lord by the act of devotion. So there's never any loss when one puts aside everything of their own desires just to satisfy and serve the Lord. That becomes the success in life. So here it says, whether one is without desire, full of desire, or desiring liberation. Oops, you just moved the whole page and I lost it. All right, I was just reading it. There you go. One should worship the Lord with expedience. This implies that bhakti yoga may be perfectly administrated without any mixture of karma and gyan. And ultimately, we say, maybe before one by one and all, regardless of inner motive. So, in any case, just take the Krishna consciousness and everything will be successful. Whether you're full of material desires, still have a whole list of things on your desk where you want, you want to still accomplish in life, or whether you don't have any material desires, you just want to be free from material sufferings, or whether you are uh, um, uh, desiring uh, material uh, liberation, either way, in kama, sakama, and moksha kama, these cover all forms of kama, which means desire. Bhakti yoga is the perfection. It's not that we wait. It's like sometimes devotees think, well, I have to fulfill a few material, more material desires, and then I'll get serious about bhakti. Only when I get this done, or when I got that done, when I go there, when I when I have this person. They put so much time, attention, energy into fulfilling material desires and they push aside everything else. And many of the times their material endeavors always fall short of the satisfaction they're looking for. But the devotee doesn't waste time. He knows when that one who actually is intelligent doesn't waste time, just go right to Krishna. <laughs> Forget about whatever else may be important in life in terms of fulfilling one's material desires. Of course, we take care of our material body and the responsibilities that come with that, re that relationship. But these things are not material desires unless they become more important than our relationship with Krishna. <laughs> they should be done in a detached way with the with the idea of ultimately achieving success in life through the process of serving the Lord in devotion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj, for such a very, very enlightening lecture. Long for foot, but so many things are there that we can definitely take. Mm -hmm very seriously take to our hearts and, and serve. Everything really depends on bhakti, as you said. Um, so whatever desire we have, then we still should do bhakti yoga, go straight to Krishna, as you said. So then what is, um, I'm going to stop sharing and you can turn on your cameras and then also if you want to ask a question, you can do that. You can also share realizations um, as you like. So um, you can unmute yourself now if you want to and ask a question or share a realization right now. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisance to Sri Prabhupada. Maharaj, I personally want to apologize for not being on camera and not hosting, but um, if I could ask a question, Maharaj. Yeah, I think you are in the category of a comma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Marge, I'm trying to juggle the ball here where Krishna's mercy, he's keeping me going. So that's only by the mercy of Nita Gorichandra, Maharaj. 
Marge, my question, Marge, is this: When you spoke about the Gopi's pastime, about the Gopi Chandan pastime, you know, about the Lord, about Lord Krishna having a headache, and um, and that that's a very sweet pastime, really, because uh, you know, from the pastime, I think the the moral, lack of a better word, is uh, whatever it takes to please the Lord, just do it. You know, like this famous Nike slogan, right? Just do it. Maharaj, sometimes, uh, you know, we have this challenge of the just do it. Um, we know the pastime, you know, we speak about the gopis, we glorify the gopis, uh, you know, devotional service, their attitude and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But in practicality, it is such a challenge because our minds are such a rascal. So Maharaj, how can we develop that consciousness of just do it to please the Lord without even the minds giving like a million excuses. Well, first of all, Krishna will not test a person beyond their ability to pass the test. So when the instructions or the uh, requests come, it's within range of the devotee's ability even though the devotee may not see it that way. We won't be tested like the gopis. The gopis are the ultimate. The sages of Dandakaranya Farns couldn't, couldn't do it because they weren't on that level. <laughs> and so that was an example. So for a devotee, uh, Krishna will give you some... Uh, push forward in the sense that he'll give you a, just like you know when a kid is learning how to swim uh, he may not have to know how to swim but the parents will take him out into the deep water but the parents will be there to catch him but he'll try to swim and he may go he may struggle a lot so somehow or other Krishna is always there we don't have anything to be concerned about if we can make that leap of faith then we know oh this is what krishna wants this pleases krishna ultimately if it pleases krishna ultimately it's for my benefit one has to see that what pleases krishna is for my benefit because we are connected to krishna so as krishna is satisfied and pleased by our endeavor because of our connection with krishna we also benefit automatically it's not like in the future it happens at the time of the execution of the activity so um the devotees think yeah i want to please krishna and sometimes devotees look for opportunities to do things beyond their norm in order to show um just like you might say, well, all right, let me go to Afghanistan and start a temple. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes devotees take on big risks or risks in order to uh, please the Lord by preaching Krishna consciousness in difficult places. And that's an example. Or the example I always say is I have a disciples meeting every year and I ask everyone push everything aside this is the date disciples meeting the most important thing of the year for devotees to come together as a uh, spiritual family get to know each other and enjoy the atmosphere of just two or three days of full Krishna consciousness we know everything and then somebody's Parents will say, well, your your cousin's getting married on the same day, and the kid has to go to school and get his exams, and the parents have to be there and for the for the kid for the exams and all of them, and then you get all of these excuses. Oh so I think they're not ready for Krishna conscious yet. <laughs> or my boss says, You gotta work this weekend. It's just, you know, this is an important weekend. We're doing a big project with the corporation. And you know, we really need to work this weekend. So, and, you know, so 
we get tested. Hmm. And then we see what's important. Thank you very much. A wonderful answer. I hope that she hears, but she's on the old also, so they may she may not be able to respond right away. You know, um, I'm actually driving, but it's really an oh, okay. amazing point. I mean, I, I do have a follow up. Of, I mean, so many points Marge made, but I'll give others a chance to ask their question if there's any. Hare Krishna. Thank okay. You. Hopefully, you get home soon. She needs you, Mataji. Then after that, she'll pay to go. She needs you, please go on. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Parikshit Prabhu. Please accept my most humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. On this point of Akama, Karma, uh, Akama, Sarva, Kamo, Va, Moksha, Kamo, Udharidhi, etc. It is clearly said over here, whether we are Sakama or Akama or whatever it is, just worship the Lord. So my question is this. Supposing as a devotee, I desire, I want to go back to the spiritual world. I want to go back to Krishna. Is that aspiring for one of the liberations and if it is then is that such a bad thing to aspire to have the same bodily form as krishna or uh whatever it entails like say i say i want to go back to krishna i don't want to take birth again is that such a bad thing yeah it's interesting you mentioned that because i was just listening to Prabhupada speak about that today in class and he said it's still about you. So the devotee doesn't even consider that. The devotee just wants to serve. Krishna wants them to come back in the material world. They think, I'll come back, but my dear Lord, if I have to come back, please make me, bring me into the family of devotees. That way I can continue my worship for you. The Prabhupada shot that idea down pretty hard. It was really strong. Mm. Sita Sunya Dhanaka Maharavita we quoted that verse and then we spoke that. So he was speaking really right from the right from the absolute principle that a devotee just wants to serve and Janmani Janmani Ishwade Bhavatad Bhakti Arhaiti Kiki. If Krishna wants to take me back to Godhead, fine. Absolutely fine. If Krishna will stay here. I'll stay here, and I'll. But I want to become his devotee when I stay here. I don't want anything less than that. Mm -hmm. Interesting, you mentioned that question. Just this morning, Prabhupada was really hammering that point. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear that class, Guru Maharaj. If you, I may humbly request for knowing where I can access that. You can take Tanya Chari to read the class. Um, I can't remember the reference because it was an audio class, and um, but I can find out. We have to find out. Let's see. So the idea is to not have any personal desire whatsoever, and to only have the desire I want to please Krishna. I want to serve Krishna in any situation. Because a devotee who understands bhakti will, will know that's the highest happiness, just to serve. <laughs> and they're experiencing that happiness. Just give me a chance to serve them. It doesn't matter. There's the story of Chitraketu. You know that story? When uh, Chitraketu was flying in his airplane, he had just reached perfection. And he was flying through the heavenly planets. He saw Lord Shiva uh, presiding over an assembly of great sages. But Parvati was sitting on his lap and he was conducting the uh, satsang with all these great personalities. Lord Brahma was there also. Dr. Ketu laughed, thinking it was quite unusual that Shiva, who was, you know, Mahadeva, sitting in front of all of these sages, with his wife sitting on his lap. And Shiva didn't think anything. I mean, he just, but Parvati got a little disturbed. And then she chastised him and then also cursed him. 
And then, uh, yeah, I wish I could remember where that verse is. It's somewhere in the, it's a famous verse that's quoted. Uh, it's in the fourth canto somewhere in, uh, in that particular pastime. Where, can you find that pastime? Uh, mm. Fourth canto, right okay. after. Uh, this is before the pastime of of uh, of Richasura. Okay, we'll see. What is that that verse? Narayana Sarana. Narayana is the first word in the verse. Narayana. Um, I have to go. Let me see. So that one, Sri Devi. Bhakti Shain. Narayana. Fourth canto. Okay, fourth canto. Go to the listing of the different. Yeah, go down the page, and we'll see which particular one it is. I think it says Chitraketu cursed by. Um, let's see here. I'm on the fourth canto now. Is the thing. Mm -hmm. Mother Parvati curses Chitraketu is sixth canto, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, we need sixth canto. Sorry about that. All yeah. right. Okay. Sixth canto. In the right. Chitraketu. Right there, 17. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay. 27, I think it is, in that chapter, or 17. Okay. It's a nice pastime. This is answers the question perfectly. Verse number 17. Okay. Here. Yeah. Well, that's not the verse. Yet. That's um, accepting the curse. Then it must be in front uh, yeah. before that. Then, if oh, it... go to verse twenty-seven. That's the. I'm truly sure that's the verse. Yeah, Lord Shiva said. Yeah, that's the verse. No, no. Okay, that's that's one of the verses. And that may be, just go down the page one verse after another. We'll read it. All right. There it is. Narayana Parasar Reina Kushtika Nabhiyati Swarvada Kuvargana Rekesh Api Tuyarta Darsina. Devotees solely engage in devotional service to the Supreme Personality that had Narayana. Never fear any conditional life. For them, the heavenly planets, liberation, and hell's planets are all the same. For such devotees are interested only in the service of the Lord. That's spoken by Lord Shiva. After he saw the quality of Chitraketu, who accepted the curse as being a benediction that he received from Mother Parvati. He told him, you're going to go to hell. He paid his obeisances and thanks to Thank you very much. I'm on my way to hell. <laughs> so Shiva was, this verse glorifies the devotees. So we may not be on that platform, but that's the perfectionist stage. Devotion solely, never, they don't consider where they are or what they're doing. They will serve the, the Lord in any situation. It doesn't matter. Heaven, hell, in between, as long as they can engage in devotion or service. Go down the page, we'll read the purport a little bit. This verse explains that there are, they don't mind reverses in life because in the service in Orion, they have learned to tolerate whatever hardships they do. They don't care whether they're in heaven or not, they simply engage in the service of the Lord. Lord Shiva pointed out that Chitraketu provided one example of tolerance and excellence. All the devotees who have taken shelter of the Lord and eternal service are glorious. They have no eagerness to be happy by being placed in heavenly planets. 
for becoming liberated, for becoming one with Brahman. Their, these benefits do not appeal to their minds. They're simply interested in giving direct service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. The famous verse, actually, quoted quite often. <laughs> So then having personal desires, is that a stage that we must surpass or we must uh, eliminate that altogether or purify that in order to reach the highest stage? Yeah, just, just desire to serve the Lord and that's the purification. If we have that desire, then you'll have so much opportunities for devotional service. Mm -hmm. Krishna fulfills all desires. And if you want simply to serve the Lord, he'll, he'll make all arrangements. <laughs> and then the devotee will have so much service, they can't think of anything else. <laughs> they can't they even forget to eat. Sometimes they forget to sleep. <laughs> the Goswamis of Vrindavan were so absorbed in service it's not that they didn't want to eat or sleep. They just had no time. <laughs> they, just, they just absorbed themselves in service so much that they forgot all about their bodily needs. Of course, we're not on that platform, but at least we can understand the principle. Principle is the highest thing is service to the Lord. And that is the perfection. And whatever consideration a devotee has to undertake, do they consider a day... Just like Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he puts it in perspective. He says, he presents a particular mood. He says, my dear Lord, what is my happiness in my service to you? And then he, he goes through a, a list of things. And then he rejects all of it. He says, ultimately, my happiness in my service to you is the difficulties that I undergo in your service. <laughs> then I have something to offer to you. If life is easy, what am I what am I offering? <laughs> so we may again not be on that platform or we want we want what is called the easy road, but the purification process is there. So we can go the easy road and accept the purification and that can, can be very difficult. Or we can go right to the direct and just engage in devotional service and then we're already purified. <laughs> you don't even have to go try to get rid of your material desires. You'll forget about them simply by focusing on devotional service. Thank you very much for this. So in my mind, uh, excuse me, so please, let me just uh, put in this one comment from my life to comment on. So in my mind, then it's like, uh, as far as going to the spiritual world, we leave it up to Krishna as to when he'll say, come to the spiritual world then. Yeah. Right. We, if we have faith that Krishna knows what's best for us, then there's nothing else to worry about. Mm -hmm. It's like a child, he may not know what the best thing is for him, but he depends on his parents, the parents know, and therefore he has faith that his parents will take care of him. And Krishna, he'll take care of his devotees, don't worry. <laughs> hey, Krishna. Hey. Um, so please, Prabhu, your hand was up. I see I'm eating, um, Mataji's hand is up too, but Supesh, you're there. You want to ask a question, please go ahead. Then after that, Amitana um, Mataji can ask. Yes. Stop, stop the sharing. <laughs> okay. So please, are you up? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept Mahamala Bhais and says, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to the Sambu devotees. So going back to Mavana Suya's question, and you're talking about how Krishna tests us and fulfills our desires as well. So after I decided to come to your retreat. I'm just trying to bring you closer to him, that's all. Yeah. So after I 
decided to come to your retreat. Everybody's extremely happy for me. But uh, I feel like Arjun on the battlefield, all the fears are coming up about everything that can go wrong. So that's my test, isn't it, to overcome? Yeah. If you Thanks. stay engaged in devotional service, everything will go right. <laughs> so just keep endeavoring, just keep at it, and Krishna is just going to fulfill it. He'll take care of you, don't worry. He's taking care of the non devotees, and they don't even serve him. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> He says that in Kunti Yadpati Jani Hina Me Bhakti Pranashiti, how much Krishna loves his devotee. He's shown that so many times that he even his own personal interests as Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he puts that aside if it means sir, just like his reputation was in question when he said he wasn't going to fight on the battlefield. But he did because he, he did that to save his devotee. He broke his promise of not fighting just to save his devotee. And so Krishna's, you know, known as one who can't keep his promise. <laughs> but he has a higher principle that when it comes to my devotee, that's more important than anything else. That's why Prabhupada said to become a devotee of Krishna, not easy. Something that's very special. Someone said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you're the best of all devotees. Prabhupada said, oh, devotee, that is very high. <laughs> very high. Mm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't feel like a devotee yet, so Krishna, we wish us all look after me. Huh? I don't feel like I'm, I'm a devotee yet. I still just don't feel like it. So will I be looked after? Well, at least you're honest anyway. Devotional <laughs> <laughs> oh, service you're doing, continue and try to try to put quality and quantity in, into the activities that you perform. The devotee is always thinking, well, the devotee doesn't think, well, I've done enough service Maybe, you know, six days a week, the seventh day is mine, you know. <laughs> the body doesn't think like that. They say, why isn't there eight days a week so I can do more service? <laughs> mm. Thank you, Max. Thank you very much. Yeah. Getting a better sense of what being a devotee is like. Yeah. Wait a Sorry understand all right so we don't want to jeopardize our health so sometimes we have to temper our devotional service in such a way that we don't jeopardize our health in the same way but still if the situation is comes up where there is no service and needs to be done the body doesn't think of anything else thank you very much Marge. So the devotee ultimately knows if I can please Krishna, then what else? Am, what else am I? Should I aspire to? That's all. If I can please the supreme personality of Godhead, how wonderful that is! <laughs> Me, so, as a insignificant jiva, who is just one amongst unlimited, countless numbers of jiva. I'm so insignificant, I'm not even recognizable. If I can do something to please the greatest of all personalities in the system, wow, that's that's my good fortune. I remember I when, when I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, I was a bhakti in the New York temple. And at that time, we had bhakti leaders. We were working under... Uh, under the direction of the bhakti leaders. And my bhakti leader said to me one time, I can still remember it, and that was like more than 50 years ago. He said to me, your whole life you've been doing something for yourself, now you can do something for God. <laughs> I thought, whoa, I can do something for God. I thought, man, that's really far out. <laughs> I'm, I'm in... <laughs> I thought that was really the, one of the nicest things I've ever heard. 
He said in a little different way. He said, you've been serving yourself your whole life. Now you can actually serve the Supreme Lord. I thought, whoa, wow, that's far out. <laughs> if somebody says you get, a, you get a chance to go to the president of your country and he wants to meet you, so and he wants to invite you for dinner, you would think, whoa, wow. Well, that's really great. <laughs> And the president of any country in this world is just a little insignificant particle of Krishna's energy. And so, how great, how wonderful Krishna is, how great he is. Will Krishna be pleased I'm coming, Maharaj? To, to, to go with it. Yeah. I, I'm, I, I, I feel really happy. So, I guess that's. As long as you, it's still a long way off. As long as though you don't succumb to Maya's temptations in the meantime. My, Maya's temp, well, Maya's ca causing a few hurdles already, but uh, we're getting there. We're solving them. But the good thing is, you got a your wife is coming, so when you yep. come, to, oh, that'll be wonderful, and you'll make her happy by being with you. Good, good. My parents are very happy. I'm going very happy. Yeah. I told them yesterday. Yeah, so, and I won't say anything more about that, but just be aware that Maya will try to divert your attention and give you a, a more important reason why you can't go. Yeah. Then expect that. And that's her job, just to test you, to see how serious you are. <laughs> and when she does test, how do I overcome that test you say maya go away <laughs> that's all come back after after the after the, the retreat hey <laughs> please go ahead Hi, Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. So thank you for all the wonderful insights you're giving. Uh, and I'm really uh, happy to come back after many days or daily call. I was hearing you on the recordings, but due to the service, I had to hear you on the recordings. So a little follow-up on what you just said, that uh, we have to be uh, conscious about health when uh, we are doing the services. So um, what if I, I, if I'm really um, satisfied and indulged into service and I, if I think that, oh, it's okay. I mean, my little bit health will be taken care of or will be taken care by Krishna, whatever he thinks is okay. I want to continue the service. Uh, is that mood okay? Yeah, that's good. You rephrased it different than I phrased. Prabhupada said, uh, take care of your health and engage in devotion and service. That's what he said. He made a point. Okay. Make sure they take care of their health. But he didn't say, take care of your health at the expense of devotion and service. He didn't say that. <laughs> so we get, you have to get the clarification right. <laughs> Okay, so coming on to the question, what I wanted to ask is um, when one is um, not satisfied in doing the devotional service, does that mean uh, the consciousness is not right? That can be other factors. Uh, the other factors. We could um, feel that I didn't give as much as I could have, or sometimes after it's done, whatever service we're doing, we're saying, well, I think I could have did it better if I would have did it this other way. Sometimes there's some dissatisfaction, and that's good. Sometimes we think, well, I didn't, 
I mean, I could have did a lot better, but I didn't. So one may feel a little uh, remorseful or unhappy because they didn't give all their attention or didn't use their intelligence on how best to do it. So something like that. But, mm -hmm. or if it's done in a grudging way, it may not, it may not, it may not please Krishna. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't want to do it, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> that move won't please Krishna. <laughs> I don't want you to be around, but since you're around, then okay. <laughs> no reason. <laughs> so, in a begrudging way, you know. Or sometimes you're thinking, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the service. I'm going to do it as nice as I can. And then when I get done, I know that I'll. I'll get this, I'll get that, I'll get something. In other words, you're waiting for some kind of material reciprocation. And so you may feel a little unsatisfied, not because of the service, but because you expected something material from that. Thank you, Maharaj. Hey, Krishna. Hey, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, anyone else want to share or ask a question? Very, Marge, very important. Go ahead. Maj, I have another question. And when you're speaking about the about the Goswamis of Vrindavan, that there was so much engaged in service that they didn't have time to do anything. And of course, we can't even mimic that at all. Um, but, and you, and you mentioned that it's the principle that we have to understand. Marge, is it sufficient for us to just know the principle that, okay, the Goswamis, and you're mentioning, you know, like we should be so much engaged in, in service that this, that we should feel like there's no time for anything just for Krishna. And of course we can't, but is it sufficient, Marge, just to understand the principle, but not develop a little bit of the mood like the gyan to the vigyan if i'm making sense here Mara. <sighs> meaning like just know the theory but we don't apply it in our devotional life like a little bit you know a bit you can't jump up to and the ghost swamis were were tasting the, the uh sweetness of devotional service they were they were on a higher level. I mean they were they were absorbed in Nama Guna Lila and Rupa. <laughs> so they were they, the taste that they were experiencing was, you know, a higher taste, extremely high taste. So in that sense, it was easy to forget about everything else. <laughs> So it's just like sometimes you're having so much fun that you forget to do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> to use a very simplified thing. Yeah, so that's the Goswamis. They were absorbed in Krishna. They were tasting. And they also had a mission too. They were given certain services by Lord Chaitanya directly to spread Krishna consciousness. So they also were duty bound to continue to write books, open temples, like that. Okay. Thank you very much, Sridevi, Nathani, you have another question. Thank you, Prabhu Prabhu. Guru Maharaj, I would like to humbly request to know how we can become steady in our service. Steady, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back. <laughs> mm 
You asked a very important question. If I can find it here. I probably can't find it because I got so much material in front of me. I can't we'll be able to find it. But there's a verse that glorifies, it's a verse, it's a prayer to Cormac. Cormac Dave is the incarnation of the Lord in the form of a tortoise. It says, if one wants steadiness and devotional service, they should worship Cormac Dave. You can, you can look up, you know, some, I think that verse is coming from Chaitanya Charity and Rita. I saw it this morning. I mean, saw so many other things. I can't remember exactly what page it was on. But yeah, worship Kormadev. That's an easy answer. <laughs> But steadiness is not so much in terms of activity. Steadiness is consciousness steadily steadily devoted to Krishna. That's that is actually real steadiness. One is one is engaged in devotional service, their consciousness is constantly focused on pleasing the Lord. That's that's really steadiness. Mm -hmm. It's not so much the activity, but it's the consciousness behind steadiness and, and consciousness. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else? Questions? Looks like nobody's okay. So people have asked the questions. It's wonderful. Just to just to clarify a little bit, Guru Maharaj, when you say it is not so much the activities, but it is the steadiness of consciousness. Shri Devi, Maharaj is waving and saying something. I yeah. think he found it. Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, eighteenth chapter, verse number thirty, five eighteen thirty. So just go back to this. We will share again and do that. Good. Five eighteen thirty. Oh, you want to go to it? Okay. Yeah. Five eighteen thirty. I don't think it's more than just a few words. That's not Okay, well, I'm, I'm kind of close to it anyway, so there you go. Mm. What are the translations? You can read it. <laughs> oh, my Lord, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you who have assumed the form of a tortoise. You are the reservoir of all transcendental qualities. And being entirely untinged by matter, you are perfectly situated in pure goodness. You move here and there in the water, but no one can discern your position. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Because of your transcendental position, you are not limited by past, present, and future. You are present everywhere as the shelter of all things, and therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances to you, unto you again and again. See what the mm. purport says. Mm -hmm. Purport, the Shri Prabhupada. Mm. In the Brahma Samhita, it is said, Goloka eva nivasya teha kilatma bhuta. The Lord always remains in Goloka, the topmost planet in the spiritual world. At the same time, he is all-pervading. This paradox is only possible for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is full of all opulences. The Lord's all pervasiveness is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, text 61, where Krishna states, Ishvara Savabhutanam Hide Sarjuna Tishchati. The Supreme Lord is seated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna. 
elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 15, text 15, the Lord, the Lord says, Saba se cham hridishan vishto matas piti gyanam apohanam cha. I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Therefore, although the Lord is present everywhere, he cannot be seen with ordinary eyes. As Aryama says, the Lord is Anupalakshita Stana. No one can locate him. This is the greatness of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now this verse just glorifies Kormadev, and Kormadev is understood to uh, give the devotee steadiness in devotional service. Mm -hmm. Not mentioned directly, but it's understood as a feature of Kormadev's relationship with the devotee. Okay. 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 Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Lord. Any final questions? Hare Krishna yeah. Maharaj. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, please. Go. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. All of this is to you and the Shri Kapoor Please accept my humble verses. So Maharaj, uh, I have a question like whenever I, I do any any service to the Lord, uh, I had a feeling, uh, I feel good about it and I feel Krishna would be happy now with me. So how should I see this kind of unhappiness? Is it like still should I consider it as, as a, my own, uh, for my own sense gratification? So how, I, I get a little confused at times as, as, as if, you know, this happiness, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get it for myself. How should I see this happiness, my life? You're feeling happiness? Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that means that means the Lord is pleased. <laughs> yeah, if you're feeling happiness, it's not like, oh, I have to be miserable in order to perform devotional service. <laughs> there was a philosophy going around that in the early days. That if we're happy, that means that's not good because we want to make Krishna happy and we want to be miserable, and that makes Krishna happy. <laughs> <That's not> happy. <laughs> Krishna wants to see his devotees happy. And if you're happy, that means somehow or other you're pleasing the Lord or you're doing you're doing devotional service properly. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. nice. Okay. <laughs> you try for happiness, then that that is a material desire. So simply try for service. Happiness will come by the arrangement of the word. One doesn't have to seek out happiness as an as a principle of devotional service. People who are motivated by happiness, but that's that's a lesser motivation. We should be motivation motivated by. This is by the service itself and not by what we get from the service. Mm -hmm. That's bhakti. But when the motivation is love, then it's then you've reached perfection. Not at Maharaj, but at times I think that that it is like I am doing the service to make the Lord happy. Or is it like, uh, because Lord, it becomes happy to me, I become happy. So that's the same thing. <laughs> well, the idea is, the high, it's mentioned in the first canto, the, the highest perfection of life is to engage in one's occupational duty as, uh, uh, what is it, Hare Krishna, or Toshinam? What is that word? You know that. Some city Hari Toshan. Some city Hari Hari Toshan. Hmm. That's 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 the perfection. Is to please the Lord. Send the stars to the heavens. It's in the very first canto, second chapter. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what verse, maybe verses ten, eleven, twelve, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're trying to please the Lord, then that's bhakti.
Okay, madam. Thank you, madam. Very nice hey. question, Manas Prabhu. Hey, Krishna, Jai. <laughs> Chant and be happy. <laughs> you heard that I, before. I, so. I, I, that, that says why that book is that chant and be happy. We just can't just <laughs> chant and not be happy, right, Maharaj? Um, well, if you're chanting to get something material, you may not get some happy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you Maharaj uh, any other questions from devotees before we and I'm I'm just going down the list here to make sure that we don't miss anyone thank you for sharing that verse Sri Devi thank you if there isn't Maharaj would you like to end with a round of chanting yeah are you back in your Abode now? <laughs> yes, yeah, Maharaj. Yes, yes. <laughs> I've yes, yeah, I've been back for about 20 minutes. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Drive in class, huh? 